Thankfully, many of us are back out on the road taking road trips. While the fun of traveling is visiting new places, there are areas you might want to avoid. Crime in Place is a unique iPhone app that instantly provides you with personal and property crime rates for any location, current rates based on FBI data. If you are traveling for business or for fun, start with a trip to crimeandplace.com for your free download of this helpful app. Stay aware, stay safe, travel with Crime in Place. That's a good one, man. That is a good one. Everybody should be using Crime in Place anywhere you're going. Especially, hey, you got to be safe, man. Man, I actually just saw a deal, I think yesterday, the FBI put out or something like that, that homicides were up 30% uh, in 2020 compared to 2019. So yeah, I heard the that highest too. on record that since they've ever been tracking those type of things. So be careful. And app, be careful. Be aware of your surroundings. But an app like Crime in Place will kind of help you out wherever you're going. You know, it, it, you want to go to this mall or not this mall, that type of deal. Yeah, of course. Malls are one of those... Uh... You have a good mall and a bad mall. That is very true. Um, anyways, so, Howard Doss. Hey, John Larkin. Today, we have got uh, a guest here on Cocktails and Cocktails with us that I quasi-worked with, I guess I'd say, for a few years while doing Live PD. Now, I remember you doing that show. Um, you know, and part of that show, many, many beneficial things to it, but one of the things on it were, uh, you know, there were certain officers on the show that just kind of stood out. They were just people that were doing their job for whatever reason, anything from tattoos, the way they talked to people, how busy they were. Whether or not they like red boots or not. Whether or not they right, like, that yes. That kind of stuff. That type of stuff. Uh -huh. You know, if they had, um, you know, people love the canines, you know, all the, the, the viewers really resonated with those with the canine. Um, but we had a few uh, female officers on the show that really stood out. And one of them is Miss Zendejas who was known as the the steel bun, I think, or something to that effect, you can clarify of course, but she wore this big bun in her hair that never moved no matter what she We're did. not talking a hamburger bun. Like right? it looked like it was fake and pinned in there. Not a no. hamburger bun. No, her, she's got this long, very dark mane of hair and so it was always pinned up very A lot like mine. Exactly like yeah, yours. Uh, the... So Miss Indejas, how are you today? Good, good. It's a pleasure good having you on. Hey, but Thanks you know having me. We, we we really like to do one thing when we have this conversation. We kind of like to keep it casual. Best way to usually keep it casual is to have some drinks. So Big fan of drinks. So we are. What'd you pick tonight for us to drink? Pick some uh, red wine. Oh, Just we haven't had red wine. We have oh, we've got to change it up. We have had uh, several different uh, ladies, females here on the show, and you are the first one that picked red wine. And this will kind of tie into a little bit later in our story of what's going on in your life now. So the bottle that we have selected. Um, it's a red blend. It's from California. It's a local one. It is. It's a, it's a red one. I think everybody's going to get a kick out of this one. We're going to enjoy drinking it. Yeah, it's good. I look forward to tasting it. It is called Menage a Trois. <laughs> and that is the uh, red wine we'll be drinking tonight if you're okay with that. Yeah, you know, there's three of us talking, so it just kind of fit. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of fits. Definitely fitting. <laughs> Thank you. You gave me the Jesus pour. You like more? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like what you get at communion. We have these very high glass. I'm going to show you our glass. Body of Christ. Yes, I have some. Look at our. We, we didn't have any wine glasses, so I bought some at the. Or, these aren't real. These are, these are plastic. All right, so let's jump into this, but first, cheers to you. Cheers. Thank you so much cheers. for being part of the show. Oh, she got a Your glass, of, you got like a real glass. Yeah. <laughs> it's already, it looks like it's wine color. Oh. Okay, for, our, for uh, our listeners out there, if you would pronounce your first and last name, please. Andreas and Dejas. Andreas and Dejas. And let's clarify something. I think everybody thought because you were working in El Paso and your name, they made the assumption, one, that I think you spoke Spanish, two, that you were of Hispanic uh, heritage, and clarify that as well. <laughs> okay, so long ago, I was married, and um, my husband was Hispanic. He was from Southern California. Um, I never changed my last name once we divorced because I was in the military. So if you're familiar, everything has your name sewn on it. Oh. So I figured, you know, I'm still young. I'll remarry again. No, nope, never happened. Here I am, 36, <laughs> still have his name. But it did benefit me um, living in El Paso. It kind of gave me a little pass, even though I didn't know a lot of Spanish. A little street cred. What was your maiden name? It was. It's Fuller. 
fully that's not spanish that's definitely no, sir so very they, much okay. english irish <laughs> they didn't think you they didn't think you were a gringa is it gringa yeah. or green gringos <laughs> guy, right I, I honestly don't even know i don't know about yeah. that at all all right so tell us how, how how'd you get into i mean you came from southern california with a dude and you ended up in el paso how'd you end up being a police officer we always start with that because it's kind of a serendipitous road most people take it to law enforcement we like hearing it well i always wanted to be a police officer um even when i was you know a kid i kind of grew up in that kind of uh family setting so i wasn't old enough um joined the military uh, almost 10 years and um, ended up in el paso texas at fort bliss and um, had a spinal injury so i got medically retired and then um ended up staying and applied for the police department like a year after about a year after I got out and I was there for the last seven years. What did you do in the military? Well, okay. First off, what branch? Army. Okay. Gotcha. And then what yeah. they have you doing in there besides getting but, spinal injuries? <laughs> so I was, um, well back in the, well, years ago it was called NBC. Okay. So it's like That's a new year. <laughs> nuclear biological chemical specialist oh that's, we couldn't yeah. do that no that's, what did you do what'd you do in the nbc what did um that well we did everyone else's job oh okay. <laughs> we, yeah so uh we trained a lot you know with our job and, and such but um ended up pretty much doing everyone else's job and um we ran like the uh the cs chamber for everyone what's the c so. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, part like of the training, the right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Part of the training. We don't. We, the only gas that we have to deal with is nursing. <laughs> is something that everybody deals with. So, yeah, we have a CS. <laughs> totally <shit>. different. <laughs> Dirty people with stinky booties. So that's the kind of gas we deal. With. <laughs> so, then, Andrea, when you applied for the police department, um, you know, El Paso is a big department. That's a big agency, and getting on there do you have any difficulty getting on or your your military background kind of give you a you know leg up and easy easy way in the academy was no big deal that type of deal yeah i mean um well i was coming straight out of or straight from active duty so i do think of course that probably gave me a little bit of upper hand um it was pretty simple um just went for it and it worked out academy was fine like like i said i did have the spinal injury and uh, i do have a fusion so I had to be very careful, but it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. So when you got out, did they put you like, I mean, some, uh, okay. El Paso is a big department. How big is it? What do you mean big? Like 800, like Tulsa or is it bigger than Tulsa? I think it's like 1200 when I left. Oh, oh so they're, it's a, bit, yeah, they're a little bit Tulsa. bigger than us. Yeah. Um, do they have you go straight into patrol? Do they have you go in the jails? What do they have you do? No, since we were city police, um, we went straight to patrol, straight to the streets. Do they like cut you loose on your own? Do they give you a mentor? How does that work? Um, so I had a, an FTO field training officer for a year after yeah. the academy. I did the academy, I think about eight months. And then um, I had an FTO for a year after that. Well, a lot, then, of our, a lot of our um, listeners of the podcast, and we have a lot of those, can't see this. I mean, you can't see it on YouTube if you want to watch it. But um, being a woman, you're always kind of put in, you're always kind of underestimated, right? So uh, being a, a woman that's obviously a woman, um, did you get a lot of pushback when you initially got on the streets? They test you a lot? No, not really. Um, I just treat however people need to be treated, you know, and usually it's uh, respected and um, you just got to, you know, stand firm with who you are. And once they see that you're not playing, then usually don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and from my own experience, you know, I've obviously worked around a lot of females. I've supervised females and, you know, things like that throughout the years, bad guys, you know, on the street, you know, they're not trying to talk crazy to some, um, you know, a smaller male officer or, you know, try to pick on a female. They're not because, you know, they're all about street cred and this type of thing. And so they, they want to try to go at, you know, the tougher looking cops. And, um, and just as she, uh, you know, Andrea was saying though, whether you're a female, a rookie, an experienced officer, a big muscular guy out there, it's all about how you're going to talk to people anyways. And that's going to really dictate how pretty much most of your contacts go. Huh. And, and that's kind of what, uh, I think all the fans, the viewers of live PD, 
really loved about you on there was how you spoke with everybody. I mean, that, that was, that's why you were such a favorite on there because of how calm, no matter what the call was, whatever it was you went to on how you spoke with people. Well, some of these calls, what kind of stuck out? I mean, what's an, a good example of how she was speaking to people? You got one for us? Um, <laughs> well, basically, well, first of all, I spent almost 10 years in the army. So that taught me lots of patience, <laughs> uh, whether I wanted it or not. Right. Um, but this goes back to how I was raised. You know, I was raised to respect people regardless. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, so nine times out of 10, I had no problems with people. Zero, almost. Gotcha. Well, so you were on the uh, force for seven years, and there's kind of a story about you leaving, right? You want to well, share? Well, we we got we got time to get you to that. You know, already, I know you're trying to get to the good juicy stuff. Okay. Well, all right. But well, you let's know, talk I, about some other stuff then. Yeah. Well, the people, you know, the the listeners here. She was a literally a big part of Live PD. Okay. And so I think a lot of people are going to have questions just asking. Uh, how did you get selected, you know, from your department to be part of that? Because a lot of people think that the, the show, the networks, the producers pick who's on the show and they don't, they have no, nothing the, to do with that. Really? So obviously you had to, um, you know, whether stand out to somebody on your department, a supervisor, there was a reason why you were picked. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, so absolutely nobody wanted to be on national television. <laughs> Um, I had other plans for my career. I was actually um, really good at narcotics, not doing them, but, <laughs> but getting them. And um, that's kind of where I wanted my career to go. Um, so when the show came to town, um, my lieutenant asked me <laughs> to do him a favor and just, you know, ride with the camera crew one time. And I'm like, but LT, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to do with my career. And so, and I knew once I go on television, especially around there, everybody watches it, right? So pretty much knew that those dreams were gonna be flushed down the toilet at that point. Um, I did it one time and uh, the producer came back and she just kept asking me again and again. And we kind of built this bond and they became like my family. And I, you know, started enjoying it. I started, um, seeing what a big impact it was having on everyone. Um, and I think it was a pretty crucial time for us as law enforcement officers um, to, to show the real us, like to show the human aspect because that's not how we're shown, obviously. And um, it, just, it was just a huge impact on, on everybody. So it kind of changed, it changed my way of uh, how I, decided to handle my career um but the the narcotics thing was definitely out of the question at that point you couldn't go um, incognito anymore huh you had already no. been sprung they knew you were a cop they didn't even have to ask huh? yeah well you know when you're uh, on patrol i mean you wore glasses and had your hair up in the bun so does everybody recognize you with your hair down i mean obviously right now you're not wearing glasses so when you're out and about in public um everybody still recognize you oh yeah it's um, especially El Paso. It was not a day went by. If I left my house, it was, it was usually, I would run and I would run into like three or four people at least. But everybody was friendly, I assume. Yes, absolutely. Respectful. Yeah. And it's like, it goes back to all how you treat people. That's it. And yeah. how you're perceived. But it, it takes a little while to get used to that because, you know, when you're in uniform, you're used to people paying attention to you, looking at you, whether you're in a restaurant or driving your car, people turn and look at you. But when you're in plain clothes, off duty, and people recognize you and want to come up and talk to you and, you know, those type of things. I mean, for, for a while there, it's it's different, isn't it? It's very different, especially I have two small smaller children. Mm -hmm. So being approached out in public um, or at stores or restaurants, or, you know, you don't, you don't know what people's intentions are. They may sure. be good or they may not. Um, and thankfully all mine were good. Um, and, you know, had a couple instances where my children were, they were put in harm's way and that contributed to my decision to leave as well. So, but I mean, it's taking the good with the bad and, you know, always protecting yourself no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. So during your seven years there, is there a 
you know, a particular call or incident, um, you know, throughout your career that's really stood out to you when you look back and you kind of go, wow, or man, I was lucky, or man, I was glad I was a part of that. Um, there's, there's a few, but um, I'll give you this one. <laughs> uh, it was the end of the night. I was working a uh, graveyard shift. It was the end of the night. Uh, me and my partner were downloading early, early in the morning, like five or six o'clock in the morning, meaning putting our equipment into our cars in a gated uh, parking lot. Um, my partner was sitting in the front seat. I was in the back at the trunk, taking my stuff out. And I just hear these shots and then I hear them impact around me. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like somebody is shooting at us. Shooting at you guys. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> so um, it was crazy because I looked and as soon as I looked at the roadway is like my mind took like a snapshot of the vehicle and like the tail lights and everything. And um, which is crazy. I've, I've never really experienced that before. And so we jumped in the car. I jumped in the car. I called out, let, you know, dispatch know what was going on. And uh, we pursued them and we got them. <laughs> they tried to lose us and uh, we actually got them. It was a bunch of teenagers and uh, we were able to recover uh, some weapons and stuff. So um, it was Why pretty. They I'm sorry. Why'd they say they were shooting at you? Just they wanted to shoot were, at the police? Yeah. Damn. We were just <laughs> Doing our normal routine, downloading our equipment at the end of the shift. And they knew that that was a parking lot for law enforcement. So during yeah. the pursuit, did they, you know, were they ballsy enough to fire any rounds during the pursuit as they well? They were not. Um, they, I guess they thought that we lost them. But like I said, I remembered the, um, I remember the tail lights yeah. and I seen them turn down a road and I'm like, oh, hell no, you're not getting away from me. <laughs> yeah. So they were just basically little cowards that try to ambush you guys. Yeah, man, uh -huh. But then when you brought the battle or went after them, they just kind of it was it. You know, it was pitched over. up. I'll put it that way. Well, <laughs> well being yeah. a border town, El Paso is a border town. Um, and I've been through El Paso quite a bit. What kind of, I mean, you hear about a bunch of smuggling operations, things being thrown across, uh, border security, that kind of stuff. Did you have to mess with me after that? All the time. It, All the time. Um, a big thing before I left, um, it was weekly that we were getting like welfare checks um, called in by like neighbors and we would get there and we would meet with the, you know, the person who called and they would tell us, oh, our neighbors are, are, you know, they don't live in the house or they passed away and no one's supposed to be in the house. Right. So, but they would see people in the house. Uh, so we would go and investigate and nine times out of 10, it was a human stash, uh, stash house. And those were, we found those on a weekly basis. You know, and that was just my shift. I'm sure there was plenty other ones on the other shifts. Yeah, well, explain to us what kind of house that was. It you called it a snatch like house? a human a human stash house. So once they're smuggled um, across the border, they stash these people. In, <laughs> they stash these people in um, in random houses and so wait for the next transport to come and take them. I guess right where like coyotes, right? They just say, hey, here we have, have an empty house. Let's put some people in here. Pretty much. It's it's absolutely nuts. Damn. Well, um, you are no longer in law enforcement. Nope. Um, that career came to a closure earlier this year, this summer. And I think uh, at the end of July, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. um, you have uh moved on and, and you've got another little uh, uh gig going um, but during the time your transition as you were phasing out your law enforcement career uh is kind of when you started this other one is that correct that's correct <laughs> and what exactly are you doing now <laughs> these days Miss? um so about a month out um i dropped my um, resignation paperwork and basically gave them my last day, which was July 31st. And that was going to be it. Um, one of those weekends I went to the beach with, uh, my best friend. We're sitting there one morning while the sun's coming up <laughs> and we're talking and, um, it was always a running joke with my partners, right? Because, you know, joking about, you know, cop pay and we don't make what we, <laughs> what we should or whatever. That's the truth. And, 
<laughs> and um, so we would always we would always joke about starting an OnlyFans, you know. Okay, so people out there that don't know, and I'm I'm sure my mom's listening, and she has no idea what OnlyFans is. So can you kind of tell people in a I'm gonna say nutshell, but it's a bad choice of words. What OnlyFans <laughs> is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So OnlyFans is a paid like a uh, subscription site where um, it's primarily used for adult entertainment, okay. and that could be that could be well, it could be used for anything, but it's primarily uh, primarily used for uh, porn or you know usually just porn. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know of any other one. We have a woman in town who is an author. And she writes racy books, and she has an OnlyFans account, and she'll read chapters out of her books on there. That's all she does is read from her books. And she's got like 10 of them or so. So, yeah, there's other Amazing. Things. Well, but she's reading about people having sex, right? Yeah, she's I mean, doing she's that. not reading like Abe Lincoln's, you Four know. Four scores and seven yeah, years ago, I said, of, point this thing to take my yeah. shirt off, take a look at these. Dr. No. Seuss. <laughs> No, yes. I would not, could not ride in a boat? No. No, yes. I mean, nobody's teaching you how to fix sinks. All I right. mean, maybe. <laughs> I've, I've seen those videos. <laughs> the plumber shows up. <laughs> There's only one way it can be paid for. Uh, so, anyway, uh, so. So now we know what OnlyFans is. Okay, so, so you, um, you do. So prior to leaving the department, you turn in your paperwork, um, you're on the beach. You're with your friend. The idea of OnlyFans comes back up, and then what happens? Um, I'm like, well, shit. Like, I only have a month left. Um, what's what's really what's what's it gonna hurt? You know, I wasn't going fully nude. I wasn't doing porn. Um, I wasn't in uniform. <laughs> um, despite you know uh, requests, no, it's not in uniform. Um, so I'm like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. So I started it actually that morning. And um, and it's funny. I used to send these pictures to people for free. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so Howard has hey, quite I, a collection of them. I, it's, I think, it's a collection. This is quite empowering to women, too. I'm all for this shit. I mean, I think this is great. I mean, this is... This is anybody who thinks this is bad. This is femininity at its finest and being a feminist at its finest. So if anybody is out there is going to talk hate on what she's doing, just mind your own damn business. And that's okay. That's okay. They can talk all they want. Right. Um, I welcome that because it just drives me to do more. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, and it's been super successful. So um, for something that I just joked around about, um, I mean, I've, I've done very well. Well, the funny thing is, as you said, I just woke up in the morning. Here I go. I mean, you're obviously you're treating it like a job. I mean, it's not like you're sleeping in until four in the afternoon. It's like, okay, time to do some work. But I can imagine that this wasn't well accepted by after you resigned that you started this. It was not. Yeah. How it, the department, uh, how did they react? So, um, like I said, I started it actually May 31st. And my resignation date is July 31st. So exactly a month. Um, <clears throat> and almost immediately, maybe a weekend, maybe two weeks in, um, I got an email telling me to report to IA this date, this time, you know, to meet with an investigator. And IA is? Internal oh, affairs. Right. That's, that's the principal's office. When you guys talk cop stuff, I can go, okay. I was like, <laughs> that's the principal's office. The police show? I have. I watched that one, that live PD, man. They never said internal affairs on there, so <laughs> you didn't watch it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so I already kind of had an idea. I had an idea of probably what it was about, but it was fine because I didn't feel like I was doing anything wrong. So I get there. Um, sit down and they tell me, they come in the room, they tell me, um, well, you're under criminal investigation. And I'm like, criminal investigation? <laughs> I've never done anything, well, crazy in my life, like, you know, to be under criminal investigation. Um, and I'm like, well, what for? 
and um, they proceed to tell me that I was under criminal investigation for prostitution. So this isn't like administrative investigation, like violation so, of policies. This is something criminal in nature, like the violation of a state statute, a state law. That's right. So what happened, um, they, the special investigative unit or special investigations unit, um, I guess they picked up on my social media. They always watched my social media pretty closely anyway. I knew that, you know, it was no big deal. Um, so they um, they started a criminal investigation on prostitution, I guess, because I was making money. They thought I was meeting with people for whatever. Um, and when they found out that that was not the case, they passed it on to internal affairs, the principal's office, to do further uh, discipline for policy violation. Hey, well, let's go back for a second. So they monitored your social media like I monitored my teenager social media like that. Oh, yeah. And it was, did they ever come to you and go, uh, we think you should take this post down. We didn't like this one. Or can you change? You no, know, I never cared. Oh, I got you. But did they yeah. ask you to do that? No, no. I had actually had no idea I was under any kind of investigation because um, I was, what I was doing. So, so OnlyFans is very interactive. So people make money off of, you know, talking to people. And, and that's why it's different from like Pornhub, which is a free porn site, right? Never um, heard of it. I, I'm sure you haven't, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a little bit different because it's Howard, very interactive. Howard, hey, hold get, on get, a second. Howard, get that pen and paper. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> what was the name of this again? Horn Hub. It's H O R N Hub. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we, hey, Sean has a very interesting story to tell right now, and this is very funny, and this is very applicable to this. Sean got his, uh, uh, his credit card stolen, <laughs> and he had all these charges on there so he called the credit card company and said hey i didn't have these charges on there i got my credit card stolen and um, the lady goes well we have like 99 dollars here 99 dollars here and you go ahead and tell the rest of the story yeah so one of them was uh it, it was a charge for like 19.99 and i did not recognize the name on my my bill and so i called the number associated with that charge and the people answer and I'm like, hey, I've got this charge for $19.99 on my credit card, trying to figure out what it is. And they said, yeah, we're whatever the name of their company is, but we're an online billing service for porn sites. And so I, it was a woman that answered, and I said, who the hell pays for porn? I'm like, it's free. And she didn't even laugh. I mean, I thought it was hilarious, but I, I've heard I've heard it's free. I've heard it's free. And But anyways, yeah, so that was just uh, – that was recently happened, within the past year. So yeah, somebody was, is out there actually paying for porn. But absolutely, absolutely. anyway, so OnlyFans, like you said, it's subscription service. And, and I think you guys, you pay to talk to people to make personal videos for them. Um, and and it, I mean, you can even do like live deals where people make, I guess, donations, things of that nature. There's several different ways you can generate revenue with your own site, correct? Absolutely, yes. And it does very well. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, not to get into all your finances, but you have done very well in a short amount of time compared to the money you were making as a police officer. Yes. <laughs> well, Sean and I make I hadn't videos. known that. I would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sean and I make videos, and we don't make that kind of money. And Howard, Howard gets pretty close to yeah, making I, I, some of them. I have breakaway pants from time to time. <laughs> you never yes, know. <laughs> but, but so internal affairs, so they when, when they do have you in there, though, um, they show you some messages between yourself and somebody that yes. was at least posing as a potential client customer or whatever, correct? Yes. Um, so they opened up the computer, showed me the folder and because I had to provide a statement, um, on my behalf, of course. Well, before so, you, go, did you go in there with a representative? That time I did, I think I did that time. Okay. Was just leading, like they were, they were picking little things here and there up until the time I left. So, uh, you know, when I did start seeing a pattern, I did start bringing, um, a rep with me. Representative. Okay. I was going to say any of our police officers, police officers out there listening, I'm not saying every single time you go to IA, take somebody with you, but if there's a potential criminal investigation, take either an attorney or a rep from your lodge with you. Pro tip. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> 
So um, I'm looking at these uh, screenshots of these messages that I have, and it's a um, it's a private conversation between me and one of the followers on the site. And the conversation stood out in my mind because I remember this person being very rude and almost never anyone is rude. Yeah, they're like dirty and, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. <laughs> But they're never rude. They, they're never disrespectful to that point. Um, this person was trying to buy me um, and they kept on and on. And so that's why it kind of stood out. Um, now, just to clear things up uh, too, I, I, was, I was never fully nude, didn't do porn or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of like a huge teasing site, if you will. Um, because I have a very mixture, a very mixed um, audience of fans, and some people might not be ready for some of those things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I keep it, you know, I try to keep it at a happy medium. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, so so it stood out, right? And I'm like, whoa! I'm like, how the hell did you guys get these messages? Because these are private. Mm -hmm. These are private. This is like me texting one of my friends, you know, and talking back and forth. Um, I never met the guy, <laughs> um, but uh, it did, it stuck out on my mind. And I'm like, holy cow, like this has to be a cop. And the supervisor was like, well, yeah, it's a criminal investigator. And I'm like, what? Some crap, man. I, I feel like it is. <laughs> so, um, you know, time goes on. And so I'm, I remember the conversation. So I find the user <laughs> and I kind of keep my eye on them because they would continue. They didn't know that I knew who they were. So and I, IA did not communicate with the criminal investigation people. Hey, she knows who this is. <laughs> uh, they screwed yeah. Up. Okay. Hey, did you, uh, did you fuck with them a little bit? I did. Okay, you Payback say? is a bitch, and I made some money off the city of El Paso. <laughs> oh! All right, you got to tell this. How, please tell us. Okay, so um, they continued. You know, they continued, hey, um, meet me here. I'll be in El Paso at this time. Meet me, $1,700, $2,000. I'm like, dude, like, first of all, I'm just selling my selfies <laughs> yeah. and, some booty, and some booty shots, okay? Like, I ain't trying to meet nobody. <laughs> And so I told him this over and over and, um, but he, they kept, they kept, they were, they were persistent. And, um, so I was like, all right, fuck it. <laughs> I made a video, a personalized video for that account. And I was in lingerie and, you know, had my hair up glasses, um, took it all down, threw it all around and got up onto the camera and I just flipped them off and they paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the thing is like, That's I it. can make pictures and videos and I can also attach a price tag. So you have to pay before you can view it. Right. <laughs> so how much, how much, how much you get them for? I put a hundred dollar price tag on that. Oh, good for you. <laughs> so that, and I'm just working on the police department, dealing with department money you use to buy dope to pay informants and things like this you have to turn in a receipt a, a, well you have a, like this buy sheet that you have to turn in every time because every dollar has to be accounted for do you turn in like a copy a link to the video yeah. as well <laughs> why are we paying an officer why are we paying the officer this money well, yeah hot. exactly yeah we just we got the officer leaving our department we're giving her extra money okay so how did this end up did they kind of go all right yeah you're you're fine. Everything's good. No, um, I had to go through a whole formal proceeding with it. Uh, very embarrassing um, because what I do is private. Yeah. Right? Unless you pay for it, not everybody can see it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So what they did um, with the whole investigation, they tried to get me on like 10 or 12 policy violations. Nothing stuck because they didn't have anything. Um, but it had to go to... Uh, what's called a, a discipline review board, which is used for like serious shit, like, I don't know, shootings and excessive use of force and stuff like that, right? Not, oh, officer here that's leaving the department, she's on OnlyFans. Right. Generally not used for that. Um, so anyway, 
I was going to be out of town, I actually flew to the Virgin Islands that week. And they're like, oh, no, you need to be here for this for this board, because it's like 20 or 30 board members, and it consists of civilians and high ranking uh, officers from my department, chiefs, sergeants, lieutenants, you know, and civilians from my community. Right. It's, so they, is it criminal or is this just an internal thing in order to take it criminal? No. So the criminal thing was already over. Okay. okay. So they, they determined, okay, there's no criminal element here. Um, there's no criminal offense. Um, because I wasn't, they were trying, what they were trying to do is they were trying to set me up. They were trying to bait me. Yeah. They, were they, trying thought, to get I was, they thought I was hungry for money and they thought that I would take the bait and, and it had, I took the bait right. And met this person, they would have arrested me on the spot for prostitution. So that's what they were trying to do. But I mean, I don't do that. So it wasn't ever a question. Um, so the board came up, I was on vacation, right? I was in the Virgin Islands, sipping on a freaking margarita, looking at the sunset somewhere. <laughs> Coming and, up with another good idea on the beach. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. So great ideas are born. Yes. Um, so uh, they called me and they're like, well, three of the policy violations stuck. Um, so you're going to be disciplined for, um, discredit to the, de to the department, social media violation, and I don't know, some other bullshit umbrella policy violation they could come up with. And so I bought 16 hours, which means they took 16 hours of my vacation before I left. Um, oh, to go back to the discipline review board, I had submitted for a um, uh, personal records. Uh, I had paid to, you know, get my personal records. Like your HR, yeah. your file, right? Yeah, well, from the city, like that, and that would involve any, any kind of accident, any kind of ticket, anything that had, you know, that I was involved in. Right. Um, and so I got that, and it was an entire PowerPoint about this thick. <laughs> <laughs> of me, um, my live PD time, uh, my only fans, and they were trying to link everything together. And they, you know, I answered like 49 questions for this statement that they had me write. It was, it was embarrassing. And it was, um, it was really a, like a punch in the face, honestly. And then um, once everything was said and done, um, I did leave on honorable terms. Um, but I was treated like an outsider. That sucks. Well, hey, the thing that sticks out to me is this you this isn't why are they jacking with you? Don't they have better stuff to do? I mean, you really, think. you got you got twelve hundred different officers and you're gonna go after the one that's sending selfies and getting a little cash for it? This seems like, don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like you had some haters in there and they were just trying to stick stuff to you, which is well that's the worst kind. Now I'm gonna be devil devil's advocate here. <laughs> being a supervisor for yeah. the last 16 years of my career, there are policies of just like the things she was talking about, discredit to the department. We have ones that's called like conduct unbecoming of an officer. Right. And it doesn't have like a flat out definition. It's basically, is there something you do that is conduct unbecoming? Right. And so if you've got staff, uh, upper management people, they, you know, they view the department or the, the city as an entity is, does this look bad on us? And so, but I see I'm that, just but she's using, already quit. Well, she was still in the department at the time. I got you, but she was on her way out. It's not like she was, she, uh, she had already decided. I mean, some, <laughs> Hey, I, I know places that give you two weeks notice and they say, well, you can, um, let me ask you now. this. You as a nurse, if yeah. you were doing stuff like that with your facility, holy shit, you should see TikTok. No, I'm just saying, no, no, no. I'm, I'm dead serious. If you were doing an only fan stripping down, doing stuff would your nursing profession or who your employer is frown down on it. Hmm. Maybe we're currently in a nursing shortage. I think you let it slide. <laughs> so what I'm saying, I'm just. Being I really do, honestly. Yeah, I'm just being devil's advocate. It's yeah. just I, I know, um, you know, obviously not an act of prostitution happened. We right. we we there's nothing criminal that has happened, but there are policies that just go, hey, this falls outside of what we look for at in an employee, right? And then you can either be disciplined or even terminated, but. Yeah. I you know, understand. she was on her on her way out the door anyway. So um, that ends up getting wrapped up. You end up leaving the department. Um, you've actually left the city of El Paso now. Um, you you have moved to another place. So what is going on in life for you now? 
now, um, I moved my, my children, me and my kids and my dogs. Uh, we moved to the beach mm-hmm. in Wilmington, North Carolina. It's beautiful out here. We just, you know, we're closer to family. Um, this side gig, um, has really, it's really demanding actually. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's, you know, it's, it is like, I hate to say it cause it's so silly, but it is like a, a full-time job. Um, so I just do what I got to do on there. I'm going to school, um, hopefully about to buy my first rental property, um, uh-huh. and start into real estate and just keep it going. Uh, there's a couple of business things that I'm looking at and, um, also, um, possibly a nonprofit for, um, police officers and veterans who maybe are suffering from mental, some kind of mental distress that are afraid to go to their command for help. That's um, right. cause that's kind of like, there's a real, there's a stigma on that. Um, cause we're afraid that we won't be able to feed our families if we say the wrong thing. Right. So, um, there's a, there's a few things in the works. So I'm staying super busy. I'm super motivated about it. Want to help our guys out. Absolutely. I need to get you connected with a good personal friend of mine that I hope to have here on the podcast. A guy by the name of Corey Scott uh, was on the department, um, actually left the department, got his master's degree in counseling. And that's what he is actually doing now is helping veterans and law enforcement officers, you know, through the the parts of life that come along with this job, the, the mental Absolutely. health aspect of it. That's and exactly needed- what he's doing. We need it now more than ever. Yeah. So we've only got a few more minutes uh, left before we have to wrap this up. Um, we got about four or five. For all of our listeners out here that want to uh, be very personal with you, um, how can they <laughs> find you? Well, um, I can, I'll post a link usually in my um, Instagram a couple times a week. But um, it's www.onlyfans.com forward slash U147146. Holy cow. I thought you were going to name All right. Let, what's your Instagram? <laughs> they can go to that and find it. Instagram? <laughs> Instagram is super easy to find. I'm all over that place. <laughs> and, and what is your Instagram? It's uh, kristen.zendejas.3. Is that with a C or K? That's with a K. All right. Just had to ask for people. Hey, I have a question to ask too. Are we being charged for this? <laughs> do, do we owe her $15? <laughs> I didn't see your boobies and you're not sending me any pics. So oh, I think there we go. Yeah. Well, if you go to our Instagram and look under there, you can see my boobies. You should charge for that. You know that, right? Um, I should probably. <laughs> Only man's. I, I think people pay to have him put his shirt back on. That's, that's probably true. But once again, for all of our uh, listeners out here, so now you understand yeah, why we have selected Menage a Trois as our wine selection for uh, our red blend, our 2019 California wine it's tonight. It's luscious. It is. It's good. It's good. Well, let me ask you this before we let you get out of here. Do you miss law enforcement or is it kind of like, all right, I've done, you know, I've done my, done my military thing. I've done the police thing. You know, you have spent, looks like 17 years serving, wearing the uniform and uh, you're, you know, you've done your time. You're glad you've moved on and doing other things in life. So I'm super glad I moved on. That's a chapter closed. Um, I don't regret it at all. I, I will always miss the job and my guys. That was the biggest, they were my family, you know, we were, we rode together, we did whatever, you know, just to whatever we had to do to get through the night alive. And so I have a very strong attachment to that. Um, As far as going ever thinking about it again, probably not. Um, But it was the greatest job in the world. It really was serving the community that I lived in. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that I was uh, fortunate as well as the 2 million people that tuned into Live PD that got to see you out there. So you were a, a, a fan favorite for sure. I know the people loved you and uh, glad I got to see you work and thank you for being on the podcast. We wish you the absolute best in what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers to you. you. Cheers.